The fishing gods have finally sent me a huge gift. And this is just what I needed to get through the next 60 days. But yeah, today was an absolutely sick day. So I showed up to this little creek after getting skunked on all the main rivers. And it was kind of like a last resort thing. So I just tied on a little pink worm and I figured I would just pitch pitch it into like the little holes and all the little rips and everything. I pitched it under this tree and I kind of felt like boom, 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 like that. And I was like, what the hell was that? So I cast it back in there. That was one nice brown trout bit. I wasn't really expecting a brown trout to be there, but brown trout can kind of be like anywhere in the creek, honestly. And like the oh, littlest amount of water right underneath a little ledge under a tree. So always cast, if you're in a little creek, always cast under the, the weirdest stuff ever. You never know if a nice brown's gonna be there. That was a really nice surprise. I did know that there was some wild browns, but not like, I didn't know they were that nice. And you could see all the patterns on them. He did have a little bit of a messed up top lip, I guess you could call it. I don't know what that's from, maybe from getting caught. I have no idea, but really nice fish. And then, you know, I kept working up the creek, casting. I got a little bite from a brown trout. I think it was a lot smaller of a brown trout because he didn't fully get the worm in his mouth. I just kept moving because usually once you cast to a, a wild fish and they bite, they usually don't bite again. That was proven wrong, I guess, with the first brown trout. So yeah, I just kept moving up the creek and then I found like the greatest hole of all time. Uh, that sounds weird. When I'm looking for a spot at a little creek like this, I just look for deeper spots and cover, obviously. So I took my little pink worm. I kind of casted like in the back of the pool, like closest to me. And then what I did was I pitched my worm all the way to the front, to the left a little bit. Like there was a sandy part and I casted my worm right over there and just whew, like that, something comes out. I mean, I said it was a brown trout, but that was just because I caught one before and I didn't think there would be rainbows of that size in this little creek. That was really exciting. And then I kept pitching out and I got bit a couple of times and I figured out that there were rainbows, but that one big one in the beginning was massive. Kept pitching out, missed those fish. They were kind of finicky too. I noticed that the fish were actually hiding underneath the ledge and all the roots on the side. They were super aggressive in the beginning towards the worm, but as I kept pitching it, they started retreating back into the uh, into the shelf and underneath the roots. I figured I missed the opportunity. Uh, I just let that spot cool off, moved up, up the creek. I ended up in someone's backyard, I think it was, but I don't know, I don't really care. I usually just go, if I get kicked out, I get kicked out. So. I found a nice slow moving deeper part, pitched my worm in, we pulled in a nice rainbow trout. They're usually all like the same size in these creeks. He was about like, not, I don't know, 10 to 12 inches. Mm -hmm. Nice fish though. And it, it seemed like they only wanted the pink worm because in the hole that I fished before, I tried to throw a spinner and that didn't work. They just did not want it at all. Tried throwing two different kinds of power bait, nothing. I also tried throwing salmon eggs and I didn't get anything. So it just seemed like they wanted the pink worm. So I stuck with it. And yeah, after I caught that rainbow trout, I moved even farther up into another person's backyard, pitched into this little part by a downed tree. It got really deep. So I figured there might be a fish in there. And of course, the rainbow trout just destroyed it, reeled that thing in. It was a nice fish, better than the first one, definitely. But it, it seems like these the fish, I don't know, they're just different this year. They they're beh they behave different. They're more finicky. Unless it's just because I'm fishing in this little creek that has like crystal clear water. They're just very finicky. That might change over the next couple, maybe month and a half, hopefully. I want to catch some fish. So after that fish, I worked my way back down. And I figured we gave it that spot enough time, the first spot that had multiple fish in it. I figured we gave it enough time to cool, to cool off. So... I worked my way back down there. I pitched in my worm and I see the, the big guy come back and the big guy missed, but the li another little guy came in and absolutely destroyed it. Set the hook on him, brought him to the back of the creek so that he wouldn't spook anyone else. That was also a nice fish, but I didn't catch any, any more after that. A little bit disappointing, but you cannot complain at all after going two days with one fish. 
That was a great day. I'd say the, the biggest thing I learned is probably just find the fish. It sounds stupid, but like you could be casting at nothing for hours and have no idea. That's kind of why I like creek fishing, because you get to see if anything's following your lure. In the river, it's kind of hard to do that because the water could be brown or stained or whatever. But yeah, find the spots. And then once you find the spots that hold the fish, I usually just throw everything in my tackle box because I don't know what's biting and biting on what. Find the spots, find the lure, catch the fish. I guess, I guess that's all. Good day today, and we'll be out there tomorrow. Peace.